medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. Join us at medcram.com if you want to learn more about your lab results. If you want to learn more about CBC results or even the EKG, as you can see, we have continuing medical education credits for healthcare providers as well, and so much more. Today, we're going to talk about hair loss, not just hair loss from COVID-19, but in fact, hair loss from any kind of severe illness or stress that you might be going through. And I have to tell you that I had a patient that came into my office for some other reasons and nearly broke down, actually did break down and cry just how disturbed she was at the amount of hair that she was losing. What could she do? She was so frustrated and scared at the same time. What was it that was happening? It had just started recently and she had no idea what to do about it. She had tried many different things. And after discussing it with her and going over what it is that was happening, she left much happier and with a better understanding. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about illness or COVID-19 related hair loss. And for those of you that want to read a little bit more about this, I highly recommend this article that was written by Amanda Mullen, published in The Atlantic just recently called The Year America's Hair Fell Out. And this is going to be a big issue uh, in the next coming up months here because of what we're about to explain. So the thing you have to understand is that the hair goes through a cycle of growth. And the hair on your head goes through this cycle. And each hair is at a different point in that cycle. So let's go through this really succinctly here. There are three major phases. There's something called the antigen phase the catagen phase, and the telogen phase. And let's explain what those are. So the majority of the time in terms of cycles is the antigen phase. As you can see here, it can last anywhere from two to six years. Now, obviously, you're much older than two to six years old. And what we'll show you later is that this cycle keeps repeating itself over and over. But here, there's actually a blood supply that goes to the hair follicle and this hair follicle is giving nutrition to the hair, and it grows about one centimeter per month. And of course, that can vary depending on genetics and the type of hair that you have. But this is something that happens in the hair on your head. After this two to six years, we don't know exactly what causes it to shift out of this antigen phase, but it eventually goes to something called the catagen phase. So what is the catagen phase? The catagen phase is this transition period that lasts about one to two weeks. And as you can see here, this thing occurs where the blood supply is starting to be cut off and the hair follicle is being turned into something called a club. And that finally gets you to the telogen phase. Now the telogen phase, notice that there's something called the dermal papilla, which is separated from the follicle. As you can see here, there's separation. There is now no more blood supply. There is no more nutrients. And what happens here is that the hair itself basically turns into a club follicle. And it can stay this way in this resting phase for up to three months. Now, that's really important to understand is the three months. So the hair follicle is essentially dead. It's resting. It's not doing anything. There's no nutrition going to it. And it can stay like that for three months. And then all of a sudden, in three months' time, the hair follicle breaks off and it falls out. Here's the part that you should be reassured about, is that already a new hair matrix is beginning to form a new hair at this point. And what happens is we return right back to the beginning. Now, this is happening all the time. In fact, every day, about 50 to 100 follicles are falling out of your hair and they're restarting this cycle. So this is really important to understand that this is a cycle that's happening all the time. And again, let's face it, this is widely distributed throughout your entire head. And so there's always 50 to 100 hair follicles that are falling out every day as a result of some of them, a specific proportion of them, going through this telogen phase. But it's widely distributed. Okay, now what happens? Enter some sort of stress or COVID-19. Could even be the flu. Could be a new diet. Any type of stress. And what happens is that for some reason, because the body perhaps wants to conserve energy, it will take many different hair follicles at different stages and it will advance them all at the same time to the telogen phase. 
So instead of having 50 to 100 entering this on a daily basis, you have thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of hair follicles all entering this telogen resting phase all at the same time. Now this process here is known as telogen effluvium, otherwise known as TE, is a process where all of these hair follicles get advanced to this phase right here. Problem is, is that you don't know that this has happened at this point until three months later, because it still takes about three months for all of these hair follicles, not just 50 to 100, to get through this phase. And then all of a sudden one day, three months after this stress, you get hair loss. And believe me, it comes out in clumps and you start to look up at your head and the panic sets in. You might start to get on the internet and try to figure out what's going on. And the problem is, is that you thought you were all better. You've probably recovered at this point, And you have no idea that this has anything to do with something that happened to you three months ago. And what you may not know is even though your hair is falling out and you think that you're falling apart, all of these now are going back to the beginning. And they're now starting to go through the process again, except they're all kind of synchronized. And of course, some of them might still go faster than slower through this, so they'll become desynchronized eventually. But the point is, is that again, they're only growing about one centimeter per month. So it's gonna take some time, maybe a few months, to fill in those blank spots. By that point, you've probably gone online and purchased some oils or shampoos that you may think work, or maybe even some vitamins, and you start to see your hair growing back, and now you're convinced that the oils and vitamins that you took are now responsible for the fact that your hair is now growing back. The fact of the matter is you can do absolutely nothing except wait and your hair will grow back if it's related to telogen effluvium. So some studies have shown that this is actually happening. There was a study that we'll put a link to in the description below that when they looked at 1,655 patients that were hospitalized with COVID-19, 359 of them months later, or about 22%, still had issues with hair loss. I wanna make sure that you understand up to 70% of the hair follicles in someone who's going through a lot of stress or COVID-19 can be advanced to this telogen phase. So be aware that it can be very stark. After I explained it to the lady in my clinic, she seemed to understand and be a little bit more calm over the fact that it seemed to line up with when she had COVID-19 and the hair loss was starting to grow back. So again, let's review. Some sort of stress occurs that causes a large proportion of the hair follicles to be all of a sudden synchronized right here at the telogen phase. Three months later, there's a hair falling out, but you don't have to do anything about it. You just wait for these to recycle back again. And after about two to three months, the hair starts growing in by itself. So what I thought it would be fun to do was to actually search in Google Trends for telogen effluvium and see how it correlated with when we had our peaks of the pandemic. So we first discovered the pandemic right here in December of 2019. And so you can see before this is sort of a baseline search of telogen effluvium in the United States. As the virus started to take a little bit more in terms of infections, we can see that there was a rise in the amount of Google Trends. We know that the Delta peak at least in the United States, was in September of 2021, which is right about here. And if we go three months down the road, September, October, November, December, we can see here that there was a peak in searching telogen effluvium as well. Now, the peak for Omicron is actually right about here in January, and therefore January, February, March, April is when we should start to see an increase in that search if that is true. So we will see whether or not that actually turns out to be the case. There may be an increased wave of more hair loss here in the next few weeks to months. When we look at where in the United States there seemed to be the most, it was predominantly in the East Coast. And you can see some related queries like telogen effluvium COVID, COVID hair loss, hair loss after COVID, and COVID and hair loss. So now that you understand how this works, you don't need to be concerned about it. You just need to have patience and understand that in this case, the hair is going to grow back on its own without any help from any sort of vitamins or oils. 
If you want more information about COVID-19, please join us at medcram.com where we have our entire series of the coronavirus there on our website, as well as other medical information courses, some offering continuing medical education credits. Thanks for joining us.